I have a lot of sock books and I want everyone to be able to make perfect heels on their socks. I offer several kinds of heels in my books, but this video series is about making perfect short road heels. It's one of three videos. One is general, demonstrated on the Superma. One is specifically on passive heels. And this one is specifically on Japanese heels. My latest sock book is this one, the Bees Knees Knee Socks for Ladies. They are knitted tubular and they require a standard gauge machine. Standard gauge includes Japanese machines like Brother, Studio Singer, Silver Reed, and Peasel, and also European double bed machines such as Superba, Passive, and Orion. The knee socks require number one yarn and real sock yarn is recommended. Now I'm going to do the Japanese demo on a bulky machine because you can see it better and because that's what I have set up with its ribber right now. The technique is identical on all gauges. First, you need to know what hold position is. On this Brother Bulky, it's N versus H. H is hold. On the Silver Reed family of machines, it's levers labeled 1 and 2. Find out from your manual which specific one allows stitches to stay in hold and engage it. Now, even though the socks are tubular, I'm first going to demonstrate just on one bed so that you get a full view of what's going on. My heel stitches are on the main bed. The other half of the sock is imaginary. On the left, I'm working the automatic short row by knitting across, then placing the last needle that knitted in hold. On the right, I'm using an alternate method, which is really the automatic short row plus a wrap. To do that, we knit across, wrap the nearest needle to the last one that knitted, then put the last one that knitted in hold. This method is giving us two ways to prevent there from being a hole where the short rows adjoin. As soon as we have knitted the shortest row, which is seven stitches for this sock, we will start adding needles back to work. Here comes the second to shortest row and the shortest row. And before we knit back, we'll push one needle on the side away from the carriage back to work and keep on doing that. Very rarely is it necessary to wrap or do anything going both directions. Usually one direction is adequate. Normally, we do need to add some extra weight where the heel pouch has formed, and you see me doing that now. I got by with it a good long time on this sock, and what usually we need to do it before now, sometimes as often as adding the weight after four rows and moving it every four rows to keep it right under where the live stitches are knitting. But we're about to short row all the way out, and the heel would be complete if this was really a sock but of course it's half a sock. Generally, the automatic wrap is my first choice of sock heels, although there are occasions when we need to do something different. I'm about to show you the more commonly used method, which is knit, wrap, and then knit. And for that, we put the needle on the opposite side of the carriage and hold before knitting the row, a little bit different than what I showed you first. And after knitting the row, we wrap the held needle that is nearest to the last stitch that knitted. I'm working with the same 21 stitches as I did for the first example, so we will still short row in until the shortest row is seven stitches and then short row out. And we will still add weight and move weight, which I've done sneakily without you really seeing. There I am moving it. And now the second half goes just as the Short rowing out goes for the other method. We push one needle on the side away from the carriage, back to work, knit across every time until they've all knitted once. Now let's do a sample where we are actually are knitting tubular because there's a special way of managing this that I want to show you. Now you could keep the configuration of the machine with the ribber attached if you wanted to and successfully knit the heel. But on Japanese machines, we normally use the main bed for the heel. So you may want to consider putting the river bed all the way out of commission. 
With the regular sinker plate in place, the main bed can then give us its best work. We can use a sturdy length of a separate yarn and knit back every stitch all the way until the needle butt touches the rail. So these stitches are completely out of work. After doing that, we can remove the ribber arm, put the sinker plate in position, knit the sock heel on the main bed, and using whichever style of heel that you have decided is the most comfortable for you. And when the heel is complete, we can pull on the ends of the temporary yarn to lift the stitches back to work. Ideally, you can pull on each end and they'll pop back up, but I prefer to be a little bit more cautious when making sock heels. Another thing you can do is what I did here. I used two separate lengths, so I had two batches of stitches rather than one, and that's a little bit of a safety feature. We're done with that extra piece of yarn now, and by the way, you can use Ravel cord for that. So you can just discard it. And now to prevent holes where the short rows begin and end, lift the purl bump from each side of the heel knitting, that'll be on your main bed, lift it and hang it on the end needle on the river bed. You still may find that you need to tug on the working yarn to get some slack out, and now you can close up the beds and continue knitting the foot in the round. Let's have a look at the various heels. Here's the one that we just made. It's just like one side of the first heel I showed you. Notice that my skin is not showing through. This is a nice tight heel. The other side of that heel is the wrap plus automatic wrap. So you can see little strands of yarn where I wrapped and it is also a nice tight heel. So that's two of our samples. Now here's the traditionally wrapped heel, which is also nice and tight in this particular yarn. Honestly, I would choose based on the yarn I was using. I'd do a sample heel in each style in any particular yarn and choose based on the results.